Hi, I'm Roger Montgomery from the Montgomery Fund and welcome to this week's Video Insight. Now, I don't go to casinos, I never have, but I don't begrudge others who enjoy it as their own form of entertainment. For me as an investor, the odds just don't stack up. And I still can't understand why so many people play poker machines, it seems utterly mindless to me. But the fact that they do has been a boom for Mr. Len Ainsworth, the founder and former head of poker machine manufacturer Aristocrat, and now the major beneficiary of the successes being garnered at Ainsworth Gaming. Going through the results very quickly, revenues were up 32% for 2013 and EBITDA was up 39%. Net profit after tax was down, but that's because last year the company didn't pay any tax and this year it did. So on that basis you really should be looking at the operating numbers and they were up over 30%. And remember, these results are in recessionary conditions. Importantly, management came out and said revenue growth is expected within all international markets. Now I think they're being overly conservative and overly cautious. Growth in South America, for example, was 77%, but total revenue was just $19 million. Think about that for a minute. The entire continent of South America and revenue, $19 million. In terms of a rollout story and upside, the story has only just started. In the United States, the biggest market in the world uh, for mind-numbingly boring poker machines, total revenue was just $49 million. And the company has 602 gaming operating units installed at casinos across the US. Just 602 in the United States. Back home here in Australia, the company has enjoyed revenue growth of 21% and this is the lowest annual growth since 2008. But before you worry that everything's falling off a cliff, there's a lot of market share gains to be had here as well. Management went on to note also after the result that profits after tax in the first half of 2014 are at least 15% ahead of that reported for the first half in 2012. Now, Total units sold in 2013 was 2021, up from 1,288, and the second half saw 1,196 units sold. In other words, sales are ramping up. More importantly, the number of units on trial looks healthy as well, and that's an indication of future sales. Most importantly though, not only is the company selling more units, but each unit is generating stronger returns. For any other business, this is the same as raising the price of your product and still selling more. Over the course of the year, the company achieved yields of about $39 a day compared to $28 a day in 2012. And in some venues in the United States, the company is generating as much as $60 a day. Okay, so the company's growing strongly and it has enormous potential. But as you know, growth and the quality of the business is only one half of the puzzle. The other half of the puzzle is whether or not there's good value. Now at the moment we don't think AGI's shares are cheap, but if they fell back towards $3, we would certainly be changing our mind and adding more to those that we already own. That's the story this week. I look forward to seeing you again next week with another insight. And in the meantime, please continue to follow us on Facebook and Twitter.